go ahead and begin our officer training conference. So I'm really glad you all are joining us today. The executive committee is super excited to have you here. So while we go through this content, um, I will say this meeting will be extremely content heavy. We'll have a lot of great information for you. But with that, it's going to be really beneficial if you're taking notes, asking questions, and be sure to process and apply the information whenever you can. So I'd recommend having a paper and pencil available. Um, if that's nearby, or you can take notes in your computer, on your notes app, on your phone, just anything that works for you. It will be most beneficial if you can take this back to your club and back to your work as an officer. So hopefully you have that prepared. And first we can talk a little bit about ourselves. So hi everyone, my name is Kyle Hansen. I'm currently serving as your district governor. So district governor, my role is, um, it's not super defined, but essentially I support and grow our clubs and our division. So I kind of oversee our entire district, which I'll talk about more later. So with that, um, I kind of oversee everything that's going on. I try to provide support and feedback when possible. Um, some things that you'll see that I do are hosting webinars, our Key Club Days event, which we'll talk about more later, as well as visiting different clubs and divisions within our district to meet you guys, learn about issues you're facing, and provide you guys with support. Um, and additionally, I worked really closely with lieutenant governors, which a lieutenant governor is a person elected to basically lead a division, which is a group of clubs, um, and they host presidential council meetings and other events. So I work with them really closely to be sure their work is super effective and efficient and that they have the support they need. Um, additionally, I work to oversee our clubs and our divisions through, um, as I was saying, like the webinars. In addition, I'll send out email updates, kind of see what pressing issues we have and work with our district committees to address those. So with that, I serve as a liaison on two district committees, which is our District Project Committee and Decon Committee. A little bit about myself. So I'm from Beaverton High School in Beaverton, Oregon, obviously. Um, I'm currently a rising junior. I just got out of school a week ago. Um, previously in Key Club, I was a club president of my home club, which was a really great experience. I've been able to use that and apply that to my role as governor really well. Outside of Key Club, I'm pretty involved in a lot of STEM equity and education organizations, such as Oregon Mesa or CIA Science, which is a club that was started at my school to help um, teach science elementary schoolers in an engaging hands-on way. And then outside of school, I love to rock climb, grocery shop, and do escape rooms. So I'll pass it on to Mia to introduce herself. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Mia Shi, and I'm currently serving as your uh, district secretary. And so my roles include strengthening communications between the club level divisions and the district. And this is mainly done through the officer Google groups, which you all should be a part of by now. Um, I also keep track of all clubs progress by reading through your club's monthly secretary reports. And I serve as a member on the KFAM committee where I serve as a liaison. Um, and currently I am a rising senior at Mercer Island High School where I also served as my Key Club president last year and a club secretary the year before. Other than Key Club, I spent a lot of my time in VEX Robotics, so I am on the Team 10B, which is also Exothermic Blaze. Um, and some hobbies of mine include watching crime documentaries, playing badminton, and recently I've gotten into reading a little. And now I'll pass it off to Jessica. Hi guys, my name is Jessica Xiong. I'm currently serving as your district treasurer. Um, my role at, as a district treasurer includes um, ensuring a smooth dues collection process in the fall, and this involves contacting and reaching out to clubs in need, as well as providing any resources and assistance. I also serve as the Pinwaf Committee Chair, where I lead the Pinwaf Committee to properly promote and manage the Pinwaf Grant, which we'll be getting into a little bit later in this slideshow. Um, and I also serve as the liaison for the Membership Growth and Reactivation Committee. Um, and for a little bit about myself, I'm a rising senior at Mountain View High School in Vancouver, Washington. Um, for the past two years, I served as my school's club president, and I'm also involved in Knowledgeable and Science Olympiad. Um, outside of school, I like reading and art. I like oil painting the best, and I like baking. Um, and I'll pass it off to Jack for his introduction. Hi everyone, my name is Jack Mo, and I'll be serving as your district editor for the 2022 to 2023 term. And basically my role is to keep the district informed of new updates and any news. 
And as editor, I manage the PNW Key Club social media platforms, such as the YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and I serve as a liaison to the decon committee and the webmaster. So some quick things about me are that I go to Olympia High School in Olympia, Washington in Division 38. And I'm a rising senior. And in the past, on my key club, I was a treasurer. And in my spare time, I like playing clarinet and tenor sax in our school's wind ensemble and jazz band. And outside of school, I also enjoy playing tennis and reading books. All right, perfect. Thank you. Hopefully that helped you all learn a little bit more about us and um, see what we do and what we do in our personal lives as well. So our agenda for today, um, it's pretty packed. This meeting will last about two hours. So first, we've got some team bonding for you all. And we'll go into some basic Key Club 101 um, general officer responsibilities. And we'll have some specific officer responsibilities. And for that, you'll sit through all the responsibilities so you can better understand the role of each of um, the officers in your officer board and kind of help them throughout their term and see what could be delegated to them and what specifically they'll be working on. Then we'll give you guys some team time with your officer group to set some goals and do some scenario brainstorming. And at the very end, we'll have some time for an open floor discussion and questions that you all have. So first, we're going to move into team bonding. So for this, I'm going to show you all six different team bonding ideas you can bring back to your club, and then we'll vote on three of them to see what we want to do tonight on Zoom to get to know each other. So the first two options that we have um, to bring back to your club, so we have team trivia. This is a really fun icebreaker where you divide your members into teams. Um, you can do that in breakout rooms on Zoom, or if it's in person, you could just put them in different areas of a room and you basically do trivia against each other. You could do Jeopardy or you could do Kahoot, um, something like that. It's always fun and interactive. You could do key club trivia, maybe help end hunger or district project. Um, just something fun, competition always fuels participation and it helps your members get to know one another. Another option, which will be one that we'll be voting on tonight is something in common um, where you have groups probably of four or five, six people and they have to find something in common with each other. So the more unique and specific, the better. So this just helps them get to know each other and find a shared interest. So hopefully start a conversation. And we've got show and tell hunt, um, which is where you list item prompts your members to find in the space around them. This is really great if you're doing a meeting virtually on Zoom, um, you could do something that makes you happy, something no one else has, just a fun, unique item that the member has to find and then come back and share with the rest of the group. And then another easy one is a poll check-in. You basically can ask questions for members to answer on Zoom. Uh, it can be really basic ones, like how many hours of sleep did you get last night? You could do what's your favorite food and have different options. Um, just something to get a general group consensus of what people like to do, what their interests are, and hopefully spark a conversation in the chat. And with the chat, you are welcome to use the chat feature at any point tonight, raising your hand if you have any questions throughout our presentation. So please be sure to utilize that and really engage. And then the final two um, team bonding activity ideas for you all is a positivity minute where you have um, each person gets one minute and people in chat, or if it's in person, they can just do it out loud. We'll just give compliments to that person, say everything they love about them. If you don't know each other too well, you can just um, say what you do know or something maybe about their looks, like you like their eyes or something like that. Just something really fun and positive for everybody to bond together about. And then so my personal favorite is most recent photo where you have members go through their phone, find the most recent photo in their camera, and they have to share that with everybody in the group. So now that you've heard all those options, I'm going to start a Zoom poll for you guys to vote on um, three different ones. We'll be voting if you want to do our th something in common where you go into a breakout room, find something that you all have in common, your show and tell hunt, or a positivity minute. So I will launch that poll right now. So if everyone could please vote and see what you want to do in breakout rooms, that would be really great. And then we'll randomly assign that for you all to meet each other. So we will now move on to Key Club 101. So the general structure of Key Club, I know it can get really confusing with all those words thrown, around, thrown at you like district and division and club. So here's a really easy way to remember it. 
Um, the most important part of Key Club is a member. We're all members of Key Club. These are the people who do the service and um, really make the club possible and make sure that we continue to exist and help other people. And then members come together to form a club. Generally, a club will be based at a high school, but sometimes it won't be if you're um, homeschooled. We sometimes will have key clubs that are just community clubs in general for high school students. Um, so clubs will have their own service projects, fundraisers, and elected officers like you all to lead their club and lead those events and meetings. And we have a division. So multiple clubs form a division together, which are led by a lieutenant governor. Most of you in this call right now currently do not have a lieutenant governor, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. But these clubs can come together for divisional council meetings and service projects, um, just like a club does with members. So it really gives you the opportunity to connect with other people and meet them. And then divisions come together for a district. So we are the Pacific Northwest District, with, um, which has executive officers being Jessica, Jack, Mia, and I that will lead the district. We also have lieutenant governors that form the district board. And then finally, we have Key Club International, which is comprised of 33 districts across the world and represented 38 countries. We have an international president, vice president, and 11 trustees. A trustee is essentially a lieutenant governor, but for three districts instead of clubs in a division. And then the Kiwanis family. So Key Club is part of a larger Kiwanis family, and we are one of their branches. So for elementary schoolers, we have Kiwanis K kids. So that's basically, you can think of it, Key Club for elementary school. We have one for middle school called Builders Club. And then for the collegiate service level, we have Circle K. And we have Action Club, which is for adults, disabilities, and Kiwanis, which is for all adults. Um, so you can definitely continue your Key Club journey past high school through those opportunities like Circle K and Action Club and Kiwanis and just continue serving and helping other people, which is really great. And then talk about our Key Club International Board. So currently our Key Club International President, Salma El Deeb, she's from the Florida District, our Vice President, Melanie Kim from the Georgia District, and then our assigned international trustee is Emily Leonard, although her term ends July 11th, so it's coming up pretty soon. Um, but she mostly works with me to help give me international updates on preferred partners and charities and things like that. And then Key Club has our core values, which Key Club International loves to advertise and really make sure is built into all of our Key Club works. So we have caring, leadership, character building, and inclusiveness. These are really important to your work as an officer. I hope you keep these in mind and use these in and out of Key Club to lead your work. And then as I was talking about earlier, Key Club International and our partners, we have some really great um, official partners of Key Club International, like the First Project or Nickelodeon that help give us really easy member opportunities. So if you're ever looking for somewhere to volunteer, these are really great places to consider. We also have some preferred charities like the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals and UNICEF um, that again, really give you those volunteering opportunities and an easy connection. If you say you're a part of Key Club and reach out to these groups, they likely have something for you to do and help out with, which is something really good if your club struggles to find service opportunities. All right, and before I move into our district staff, I wanna go over some lingo. There are so many abbreviations in Key Club. I know it can be a little overwhelming at first, but I promise you'll get it down. It will become secondhand very quickly. So first we have a DCM. This is a divisional council meeting. Um, you won't hear too much about this unless you have a lieutenant governor, but a lieutenant governor essentially organizes these service events for multiple clubs to participate in. We also have a PCM or presidential council meeting, which is for presidents in a division to come together, um, brainstorm, give club updates, talk about issues they're facing. And then LTG is just a shortened version of lieutenant governor. We have DCON, which is our district convention, which this year will be in Seattle, Washington from March 30th through April 2nd, which is super exciting. We also have international convention or ICON that's coming up um, in a few weeks in July. And then we have the MUC, which is really important for treasurers and secretaries. That's a membership update center. Jessica and Mia will talk all about that later. And then we have innies and outies. An innie is an incoming officer, while an outie is an outgoing officer. 
All right, and a little bit about our district. We are the Pacific Northwest. We're geographically the largest district. We go all the way from Northern California up through Alaska, including Canada, BC. Um, we have 12,000 members, which is one of the larger districts at Key Club International. Super exciting opportunity to network and meet other people. We have our district mascot, Morty, there. He is a moose. You'll see him a ton on our Instagram page um, and in newsletters that Lieutenant Governor's put together. Then we have our district color, fuchsia. And then our executive committee, obviously, is us four. You guys already heard from us and got our updates, so we can move past that. Um, we have our district board. This is a older photo from in person. So the district board consists of our executive committee, and we also have committee chairs and lieutenant governors that make up our district board. We'll have meetings um, four times a year where we kind of connect with each other, give ideas, give updates and training to our LTGs so they can provide you with the best support possible. We also have a lot of adult support in Key Club from our Kiwanis area administrators and district administrators. So they handle a lot of the paperwork and just give continuity to Key Club, um, being sure that the students feel supported and being sure we can achieve everything we want to as a student-led organization. And then district committees. So I've already thrown this term out a little bit, but to define it, it's um, a committee is made up of lieutenant governors and a committee chair, which is usually a lieutenant governor. This year we have the six committees you can see on screen. They're established at the beginning of a year and appointed by myself being the district governor. And they're the main way that we're able to accomplish our goals throughout the school year. So the committees consist of that committee chair, and we also have a committee secretary, our lieutenant governors and area administrators. These committees put out really good resources. Um, some examples, the MGRC committee, our membership growth and reactivation. They put out a what is key club promotional video for you all to use. They put out membership growth toolkits, membership guidebooks, virtual engagement toolkits, a lot of really good condensed resources that you can use. Um, to make your club meetings more engaging and exciting. We also have Kiwanis Family Relations. They put out Builders Club curriculum and toolkit. So they really help you engage with those other branches of the Kiwanis family and hold those joint events. Then we have the Pinwaf Committee, which I will talk a little bit more about later, but they um, help put out service planning guides in addition to a grant opportunity. So yeah, the PINWAF stands for Pacific Northwest Opportunities Fund. It's a grant application that gives money to PNW Key Clubs for a unique service project or fundraiser um, for the district. So clubs can receive anywhere from $100 to $1,000 for this really great opportunity for a service project that covers up to two thirds of the cost of it. So if you're ever planning a large service project as a club, definitely consider applying for the PINWAF grant Applications open September 1st to October 31st, and our district treasurer, Jessica, as well as the rest of the Pinwaf committee, spend a lot of time reviewing those resources and those applications. So be sure to apply and give it your best effort. Um, I would recommend thinking about that as soon as you can. And then our district project. Um, we have our district project committee, obviously, and they work on creating resources around this. This year, it's help end hunger. So each year, the governor is responsible for selecting one high impact service project for the district as a whole to pursue. Um, the past three district projects before this one have been the first projects. This is something newer to our district. We had it last year. This is our second year doing it. So um, we chose hunger this year because hum hunger impacts youth and it's really local. So Feeding America predicts that 13 million children experience food insecurity in 2021 nationally, which is up from one in seven that in 2019 that lived in a food insecure household. So because of the pandemic, a lot of these issues have, have been exacerbated and they have not um, came back to pre-pandemic levels and they just continue to kind of perpetuate themselves. So it's really important to, for us to step in together to try to help end hunger. Additionally, what's really unique about the Help End Hunger District Project is it's local and gives you the opportunity to engage within your own community. So food insecurity is prevalent all over the Pacific Northwest in both rural and urban areas. So no matter where your club is, you have the unique opportunity this year to connect with local food banks, food pantries, host your own food drives and see the impact of your work in your own community. 
Additionally, hunger and food insecurity impact marginalized communities the most. So specifically Latino, Black, and Native American individuals are disproportionately affected by hunger and food insecurity. So this um, issue in the service really relates back to systemic racism and a lot of issues that our generation is looking to combat and care about. So it's really important that we put our best effort into helping end hunger. Um, further, it's an equitable project and you have that direct local impact and connection. So hunger and food insecurity are issues that we can address through fundraising, service projects, and education. So rather than just being able to raise funds for this, you can host your own service projects that don't have any financial ties at all. It increases accessibility for it, allows your members to put together really great um, projects for it. And we also have a lot of unique service opportunities. You can get all your members involved. It doesn't just have to be raising money and doing fundraisers this year. You can host your own canned food drive if you want, or you can go volunteer at a food bank. Some organizations to consider, depending on your location, are Feeding America, which is uh, mostly for people in Oregon. They work really closely with the Oregon Food Bank, Food Lifeline, and Second Harvest. And then for people in Washington, we have the Northwest Harvest Coalition. They're a really great organization that work to provide food to people in need in Washington. And then for those in Canada, we have Food Banks Canada. Um, they do work all across the nation, but in BC especially, they have a lot of really good food banks and networks that you can go through. So if you go to any of their websites, you can find lots of great opportunities there. All right, so now that we got through all of those district committee information, we have district resources for you all, which is gonna be really important since you do not have a Lieutenant Governor currently. Um, so the first one is our Instagram, which Jack runs as he talked about at PNW Key Club on Instagram. On there, you'll see a lot of really good infographics and announcements such as our district convention logo design contest or upcoming webinars. And we also have our pnwkeyclub.org website where you can find a lot of publications and resources for you all. So the resource we're talking about earlier, um, such as membership toolkits and guidebooks, you can find those on our website through the publications tab. And then lastly, a really important one are our biweekly email updates. So every two weeks on Tuesday, I send out a biweekly email update, which has a ton of information and updates from me and the rest of the executive committee. So if we have any new contests coming out, any webinars coming out, you'll find out about them first through those biweekly email updates. You can subscribe to get those on our website. If you just scroll down to the bottom, you'll see sign up for biweekly email updates and you can do that there. Something super easy that I would recommend you all do. All right, and furthermore, since you do not have a Lieutenant Governor, some really important resources that the executive committee has put together for you this year include our publications, webinars, and club correspondence messages. So each month, um, the executives will write a letter. It's basically a really long email to their corresponding club position. So I'll write it to presidents and vice presidents, basically giving you advice for that month. So for this month, for June, I talked about service opportunities, how to properly plan for the new school year and set goals. So be sure that um, you're receiving those messages and reading through them. If you filled out that attendance form earlier, you will start receiving those messages from now on. We have those for all the positions listed on the screen. So that's something really good to get advice and connect with other people about. And then we also have webinars, such as our executive chats. We'll have one coming up in July that you'll see about on Instagram and hear about on by weekly updates. Gives you the opportunities to meet us, see updates from the district, and gives you the chance to ask any questions you've been wanting to ask to us. We also have committee webinars. So our district committees will put together webinars based on certain issues, such as our district project committee. They'll put on a help and hunger webinar to help you plan service projects coming up here in August. Or our KFAM committee will help you plan for the new school year and recruit middle schoolers. We also have publications on our issue page. If you look up PNW Key Club issue spelled as it is on the screen. You can find that. That's where you'll find all of our espresso articles, which Jack writes quarterly. Um, that's like a 20 page. Com it's basically a ton of articles and resources put together into a 20 page 
booklet that you can find online and access there. So we have a ton of stuff ready for you, even though that you do not have a lieutenant governor currently. All right, with that, we are going to move on to general officer training before we move into a quick break. Um, so try to stick with it and stay engaged for the rest of this portion. So this applies to all officer positions and are just good things to know throughout your term. So for the general officer training, it will just contain information about attendance, um, tips for having club recruitment, just things that apply to every position. And after that, we're gonna move into the pos position specific information. So in terms of attendance, all club officers should be attending all your club meetings and board meetings for presidents. If um, you do get a Lieutenant Governor, if you have one, attend those PCMs as well. It's really important for you to also attend those club service projects and fundraisers. It's super sad if a club president is not, or a club officer is not attending service projects and fundraisers, but the members are. They want to see you there. Be sure to bring a lot of energy. Be super excited to all the events you're going to. And then be sure you're attending our district events like decon or district convention. We also have key club days coming up. We have fundraiser service projects and also Kiwanis meetings are really important for officers to attend. Each club has a sponsoring Kiwanis club and you should have a Kiwanis advisor that you're in contact with. They help give you updates from the Kiwanis side of things, give you monetary support if that's what you need, give you advice. So you should try to go at least um, to one Kiwanis club meeting per month if you can and try to attend their service projects as well. And then um, divisional council meetings don't apply as much to you if you don't have a lieutenant governor, um, but in place you can really advertise and promote our district events like key club days or district convention. All right, and then key club days. I've been talking about this a lot, so be sure you please save the date. So Saturday, September 10th in Federal Way, Washington is Key Club Day North at Wild Waves. And September 17th is Key Club Day South in Portland, Oregon at Oaks Park. So you can think of Key Club Days as a mini district convention where essentially we bring together people in that area. So for North, that's people near Seattle in the Washington area. And then for South, it's gonna be the Portland general area. And you get to meet other members um, from other divisions and kind of connect with everyone there. We'll have some educational opportunities for you, such as guest speakers and also breakout sessions where you'll get to get key club advice and college advice, how to make the most out of your high school experience, a lot of really exciting webinars. So we have a virtual and in-person component for both of these events. So if you are far away from Wild Woods or Oaks Park, you're welcome to register for just our virtual component um, for the event, which is a really great opportunity to connect and plug in from your home. You can learn about um, what the district is up to, meet other members through a virtual setting, and still get all that education that you would get in person, but through a virtual setting, which is something really exciting and really happy that we're able to do again this year. And registration for both of those will open late July. So please keep a lookout on our Instagram and in our biweekly updates. Then in terms of club communication, so please think about how your club is communicating with members. Think about if your club communication is effective, if you're reaching the most members, if they're actually reading it and checking it. And if, especially if you're using social media, be sure that it's accessible and that everyone is following it in your club. That will depend a lot on the history of your club um, just try to keep something consistent year to year so people know what to expect. Some different options are social media, group chats, or email groups. Honestly, email groups are the easiest to do. They're really formal. Most people check their email. Um, but if you have a really large club, you could use a social media group chat if you want to, like Instagram, Snapchat, or Facebook. Or there's a lot of really good existing apps such as Slack or GroupMe being two of my favorites where you can communicate with everyone in a formal setting and have those spaces and channels for informal conversations. I'd recommend checking both those out. And then in terms of delegating as an officer, there's a lot of do's and don'ts to this. So I'll go over the most important ones. So as an officer, definitely the most important is to choose your peers based on a fair and objective assessment of their skills and abilities. 
in relation to the requirement of the task. So try to get to know each other personally and know what works best for different people. It's especially important that you're assigning people something that they want to do, they're interested in, and that's one of their strengths. So that will ensure that they actually get it done and do it to a really high quality level. Um, in addition, it's important to praise positive achievements in public as an officer. If someone does a really good job, try to really uplift that and highlight that in front of other people. And then if somebody needs a little work or clarification on something, or you have feedback to give, always be sure to do that in a private setting. Ultimately, as an officer, it's even if you delegate something to someone else, it's your responsibility at the end of the day. So be sure to do any critiquing that you have in private. Never do it at a club meeting in front of other people or something like that. Um, be sure your club meetings stay professional and appropriate by keeping that critiquing and feedback to a private setting. And then also when you're delegating, be sure to not over control the performance. I know it's hard when something does end up reflecting on you and that's your responsibility to not be nitpicky and kind of micromanage, but it's really best if you don't do that because then throughout the term, they'll kind of learn how to do it on their own, become more independent and you'll build that trust with people. So try your best to not over control it. Um, group work is really great because you get multiple perspectives represented and different ideas. So be sure to respect that and just ensure that you're not the end all be all of the work that you're putting out. Additionally, you should be delegating things that aren't a part of your core responsibilities. So be sure you're recognizing the things that you cannot delegate and things that you can delegate. So if you're a club president, you should be attending club meetings and presenting most information on club updates. It's not something you can delegate and share out, but pretend you have to make a sign up for an event that is something that you could have another officer do. Since that is not necessarily a part of your core responsibilities and something that you signed up to do. Um, additionally, something really good about delegating is that others may end up doing a better job than you or can find new ways to complete a task. So again, it's really about having different perspectives represented and having different people work on things to be sure you're putting out the highest quality work that you can. And then in terms of Kiwanis family relations for all club officers, remember that your club exists only because of your sponsoring Kiwanis club. They help start the club up, so it's really important to keep them in the loop about information and updates. You should tell them about all the service projects your club is doing. When you guys are meeting, you should ask your Qantas advisor for resources and guidance whenever you need it. Be sure you're attending their events and invite them to your events. Just keep that open line of communication because it's actually, especially when events like district convention come up and you may need help with fundraising um, for that event, it's really important that you have a good and established relationship with your Qantas family. Be sure reaching out to other branches near you. If you know of them, you can talk to your Kiwanis Club to find out if you have K Kids and Builders Clubs, for example. They're really good to recruit and get into the Kiwanis family. So they will have an easy transition into Key Club. It's a really good source of members for you. You can also reach out to Circle K if you have one of those near you to help plan joint service projects or fundraisers. And then what can Kiwanis advisors offer to your key club? Well, they can offer service opportunities, guidance, training, and support, and connections to your community. So service opportunities and the guidance are pretty self-explanatory, but connections, I will say, is something that's not often thought about that's really important. If you want to plan a large-scale service project or you want something bigger to do in your community, it's really good to connect with your Kiwanis club about that. I know during my term, I wanted to do a large greenery project in downtown Beaverton of my city. And I was able to connect with my Kiwanis club and they had some connections to the local government. So I was kind of able to get more information on that and see if that's possible. So be sure you're talking to the Kiwanians. They've done a lot of good service projects. They've been around for longer than you have. They likely know more people so they can help connect you and get you the opportunities that you're seeking. And then another good thing to consider as an officer is personal development throughout your term. I'd recommend you take a step back. Think about what you're doing and why you signed up for this. Do you have a purpose? Why do you stay in Key Club? How are you monitoring your personal progress? Are you satisfied with your work? It's really important as a leader to be reflective and honest with yourself. Throughout your term, it will go super quickly, so be sure you're adapting and taking in feedback 
the entire time, not just waiting to the end to think of what you could have done better. Uh, more often than not, it's easy to tell when something you're doing is not effective or it's inefficient. The reason that we don't see that um, sometimes because we refuse to be self-reflective. So try to talk to other officers to get that open feedback and advice, especially if you're a club president, you could put out feedback forms to your members. It's something I did throughout my term that was super helpful. Or you can just ask your officers for honest feedback and advice. It's really important to create an, an environment where people feel comfortable being honest with you without you taking it personally. Um, additionally, you can set some personal goals for yourself, especially if you move into a summer. This is a good time to do that. Think about what skills you might want to gain, what changes you want to see in the community. Just why did you really sign up for this? Having a personal motive also will be helpful for you. Um, you'll see a targeted approach to completing your work. Your term, as I said, will go so fast. So it's important that you have specific plans and ideas that you really want to tackle and that you're really motivated to get things done. Um, being selfish and thinking about what do I really want to see accomplished, what do I want to get done can be really fulfilling. And giving back to others doesn't mean that you can't give back to yourself at the same time. So take this opportunity as an officer to gain the personal development as well as help others in your community. It's a really unique position, but it's really um, good for personal development as well. Some goal examples, you can look at this later on the slide show that we emailed out. Um, you can set monthly goals for yourself or annual ones. Try to consider a wide variety of topics that you want to see, such as Qantas family relations, meeting attendance, service event attendance, service projects that you're putting out, different things like that. And be sure monthly goals relate to your annual goals, and you can assess the status of these at each of your officer board meetings. And then professionalism this is something that's super important as a key club officer. Remember that at all times you are associated with Key Club, what you post on social media matters. Even if it's a private account, you don't think other people will see it. Please remain professional. Um, at the end of the day, people will see you as a Key Club officer, whether or not you're in school, you can't really disassociate the two or have your Key Club self with a non-Key Club self. You have to stay consistent and professional throughout the entire thing. So really be that leader that you would want to look up to. And when you start to lack motivation ever, you have self-doubt, try to remember why you wanted to lead your club and why you signed up for it in the first place. Remembering why you started is really important to getting back on track and really seeing the change that you want to see. Email etiquette going along with professionalism. Please do not use slang in emails, spell check and proofread, attach attachments. If you're saying something is attached, you can find something here triple check that it can and that everyone is able to see that link. In addition, when you're sending emails, I'd recommend you follow the nine to nine rule, which is basically that you only send emails between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. to be polite to other people. They might have a different time zone and different needs and schedules than you. So it's important to be like nice and understanding of that and stay within that nine to nine time zone rule. Um, for your content of your emails, you can send reminders and updates deadlines and dates, make use of bolding features and italics to highlight information you really want people to see. And I would recommend also signing your email, something professional you can use, um, like something like I have here on the bottom right of your screen, where you have your email signature with your name, position, organization, and your email. Um, even though you're sending an email from that same email, it's important to keep it there. Um, sometimes people aren't as familiar with email as others, so it's just good to sign it with your email so they know who, who and where to contact back to. All right, and then our final thing for general officer information, increasing membership. So starting off the school year, what we recommend doing is sending personal invitations to members. It's best when you hear something one-on-one -on -one and from someone you know. So try to convince your friends to join, or even if you don't know someone, maybe reach out, say something you notice about them and why you think they'd be a good fit for Key Club. Try to show videos and give incentives to people, such as a bring a buddy system that usually works really well. And then be sure you gain a good reputation in your school. If you can get your Key Club to be large and consistently large year to year, people will be more inclined to join it and see it as a 
professional club that's a good opportunity for them. So try to get that really good reputation within your school. Um, in terms of advertising, you should advertise service, obviously, since we are a service organization. Members come for all different reasons, but one of the core and most common ones is service. So be sure you're promoting that aspect in all of your advertisements. Show people having fun cleaning up a garden or um, doing a campus cleanup or volunteering at a local food bank. In addition, you can go on morning announcements and put out posters for your club to get the word out there. And then once you do get people in the door, try to mix up your meeting styles. So you obviously should keep an agenda at each meeting, but you can really mix it up by adding in games, guest speakers, active service projects during the meeting. Something hands-on and engaging for people is always welcome. So we will now move on to the position specific officer training again, even if this isn't your position, you should try to um, listen, kind of follow along and learn what your other officers are doing. So I'll pass it on to Jack to talk about editor training. Hi everyone, once again, um, my name is Jack Mo, and I'll be serving as your editor. Uh, so first off, I just wanted to congratulate all of you on being elected to club's officers. I'm sure you're all going to do great things for your clubs and divisions. So without further ado, let's get started with the editor training. So first off, what is an editor? Hopefully you already have some idea of what the editor does. In three words, the editor is a promoter, photographer, and an editor. So as a promoter, the Bolton editor should be promoting your club in all the events, meetings, and fundraisers your club will hold. And the Bolton editor should also be promoting divisional and district events. And so this varies from club to club, but the editor can be the person sharing reminders about events and meetings on Instagram, Remind, or any other program. Pretty much as editor, you just want to ensure that all of your members are informed of what's happening in your key club, usually through social media. And then as bulletin editor, you should or will be added to the district bulletin editor Google group so they can receive district materials from me to promote. Cool. Next slide, please. Okay, so as the club editor, you should also be the club photographer. And whenever you're attending events, you should try and take as many photos as possible of what is going on at the event. So they can use it to promote your key club and show your members what your club has been doing. If you're ever unable to attend an event, you should, it is important to make sure that your other officers or members can take some photos for you. And then if you have a shared officer key club Google Drive, you should always make sure to upload your photos there so that your officer board can use them if needed. And then here's just an example slide showing a good photo versus a bad photo. On the left, the photographer got a photo that really captured the event and captured the members in a good light, while on the other side, the photo on the right didn't really show much and wasn't a flattering photo. So moving on, as editor, you can really use any program that you're most comfortable with to design your event or meeting graphics. But I'd highly recommend using Canva as it is a really easy to use free graphic design program. However, if you have Adobe Suite and also know how to use Photoshop or Illustrator, those work great as well. So then once you have your post made and description written, whether that be an event reminder, meeting reminder, or just some event photos, you can post it on your club social media account. And then we go to the next slide. Here's just like a few examples of some good club Instagram feeds. Like in the middle, we have MGHS High School and their Instagram feed is just lots of really well-designed graphics. And on the right, we have OHST Club with um, some photo updates of the events that they did and also some other graphics. And they also have a link tree in their description, which can be useful to like put event sign-up sheets, other information. And yeah, you can just try and find a theme that really works well for you. But those are just some pretty cool examples. So now onto newsletters. In the past, these were often made in issue or PDF form, but now I'd probably recommend making them on Instagram posts because that's where most members probably um, use. And so pretty much as a bulletin editor, you should be sharing a monthly post that updates members on what is happening at your key club. And basically they should just be posted once every month, preferably at the end and be a five to 10 slide post that recaps the month. So your newsletter should include at the minimum a cover page, table of contents, a president or officer update, a month recap slide of events, PCMs, DCMs, upcoming events, and other important updates. But those are just what I'd recommend adding. 
We can also always be creative and add anything else you think would be relevant to members. And here we can just go through a few examples of some good newsletters. And here you can just see they have a nice cover photo and they have an officer update from the officer board. And then they have a recap of the month and like all the events they did, some nice photo photographs and a member of the month slide. And then from Issaquah High School, they have the cover photo and then a reminder about inductions. Um, let's see, they have a slide showing the new board team, some upcoming events and, um, oh, next slide please. And they have a few slides also just showing their DCM that they had and an event. And then finally, they have a contact information. So yeah, that's pretty much what you should do for newsletters, something kind of like that. We can, as always, just like feel free to be flexible with it. So, and then of course, once you have your newsletters ready, you can send them to LTG or Kwanian, but yeah. Okay. So then although Key Club International does have a brand guide, as a club bulletin editor, you really don't have to worry that much about following it. So feel free to like develop your own brand and like use your own style. However, we do have a PNW district promotion kit that has occasionally useful graphics, such as like Mori the Moose or our logo. And that can be accessed through the link tinyurl.com slash club promotion kit. I'll probably send that in the chat if any of you editors want to like um, access that now. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you today. And if you have any questions feel, or any questions come up, come up throughout the year, you can always email them to me at editor at pnwkeyclub.org. So now I'll pass it on to our district treasurer, Jessica, to talk about the treasurer position. Um, hi guys, I'll now go over the duties of being a club treasurer. Um, so starting off, you'll be responsible for managing the club's finances, and this includes working to plan any fundraisers where money that is raised can be donated to the district project, help and hunger, save for key club events such as decon or key club days, or put towards a service project, etc. Um, transparency is key to the role of treasurer. You should be updating the rest of your officer board and your faculty advisor with any new information and in anything that you do. Be sure to also check in on your club account weekly. Um, treasurer should also have a full understanding of the financial status of the clubs and take the appropriate actions. For example, if your club is lacking in funding, you should plan to hold a fundraiser during the year to meet your club's needs. Um, it is essential that you work with your secretary and faculty advisor to make sure that MUC is also working properly in order to submit dues in a timely manner. Um, next up, what is the MUC? The Membership Update Center, also known as the MUC, is Key Club International's membership database. This is where dues are paid each fall and where your, club, and your, and where your school's club information is stored. The faculty advisor and secretary have access to the MUC, so be sure to check in and work with them to submit dues in the fall. The MUC opens for dues collection on October 1st, and the early bird dues deadline is November 1st, and the regular deadline is December 1st. The MUC can be accessed at keyclub.com slash MUC. Um, in the interest of time, we won't play this video right now, but if you're interested in learning more about how the MUC works, um, here's a great informative video that shows how, and feel free to watch it on your own time. Um, if a club does not pay dues by February 1st, the club will be suspended and will no longer be in good standing with Key Club International. To become active again, the club must submit a membership roster along with the club's missing dues for at least 12 members. Then if a club does not pay its dues by October 1st, the club will become inactive. This means the club will no longer receive resources from Key Club International. To become active again, the club must complete and submit the petition for reactivation form along with a $100 reactivation fee and membership dues for at least 12 members. Um, Key Club dues are $12.50. Of that, $7 of the dues is for Key Club International and $5.50 is for PNW Key Club. Your club can choose to charge in addition to the $12.50 and the extra fees collected can be used for service projects and decon, like for your own school club. Um, international dues sponsors and supports the Youth Opportunities Fund, international publications, the international board, membership cards, and liability insurance. Then our PNW district dues sponsor and support the Pinwaf grant, the Espresso, district board travel and meetings, officer resources, and our Key Club website, which is pnwkeyclub.org. 
Make sure your members know how their dues dollars are being reinvested into their membership experience and how your club is utilizing the extra money. And remember, members and clubs that are not dues paid cannot attend DCON. To pay dues, you need to work with your club secretary to create a member roster in the MUC. When it comes time to pay, contact your school bookkeeper to ensure that they can either pay through credit card or mail a check-in with an invoice from the MUC to Key Club International before the deadline. The membership roster can be updated periodically throughout the year anytime before February 1st if you guys get new members during the year. The early bird dues deadline is November 1st and the regular deadline is December 1st, 2022. So please be sure to submit your dues before the deadline. Um, it's important to keep financial records throughout your term and being transparent with members about club finances establishes trust among the club members. Depending on your school, you may be required to create a budget for the club and these financial records will keep you and your members accountable in case of financial mismanagement. The main documents you should be creating are club budget and treasury reports. Um, knowing your school's um, money policy, handling money policy is vital to keep your club's funds secure. Um, you should know the school's money handling guidelines and follow them. Students should not be keeping mo money from members or keeping money in your own possession. Be sure to have an adult, such as your faculty advisor, to give the money to. Similarly, be sure to count money in pairs so that both people know where the club funds are being kept in order to hold each other accountable. Um, to ensure transparency and accountability, you should be creating a bi-weekly treasury report to give to your club officers and advisors. These reports should include any income or expenditures along with when, why, how much, and to whom the money was either sent or received. You should also be including the current balance and a usable balance after budgeting for future expenses. A good tip to abide by is by writing any new information in a different color so that officers and advisors know to focus on those parts. So now... Pass that on to Mia to talk about secretary position. Yes, so first I'm gonna start with the duties of a club secretary. So as your secretary, you are in charge of collecting your members' information. This includes their grade, email, phone number, et cetera. Your next duty is writing meeting minutes each time your club meets. Um, and if you aren't familiar with meeting minutes, they're essentially brief notes of what happens in your meeting. Um, you're, the, you also include member attendance in your meeting minutes. And if you want to see an example of meeting minutes, you can always find one at the pnwqclub.org website um, under the springboard meeting minutes. Secretaries are also in charge of taking attendance at all meetings and tracking how many hours each member has volunteered. And finally, you have to submit a secretary report by the fifth of each month, which I'll get into more later. Um, and some tips and tricks that I have are to check in with your club officers before submitting each of your secretary reports. Um, and this just ensures that your information is updated and accurate. For example, this can include how much money is in your club's treasury. And yeah, next slide. For member um, information collection, you should include your member's name, grade, email address, phone number, and emergency contact. You can also choose to add a fun question. For instance, my club collects members' birthdays, and at the start of each month, we give a shout out to everyone who has birthdays in that given month. And some, tip, some tips for this are to uh, use a Google form to collect members' information. Um, and this just makes everything a lot more organized, and it's also easy to convert to a Google Sheets document. It's also important to ask people for their preferred form of communication. And this could be a messenger group chat, a Google group, school G group, et cetera. Next slide. Um, and if you want to make a Google form, here is a good example that you can reference. For attendance, as mentioned earlier, you're responsible for taking attendance at each meeting. This includes taking um, notes of any guests, which um, can include Kiwanians or even guest speakers. Um, and it's really important to have a sign-in sheet for attendance. Um, you could choose to make it into a Google form and have members scan it as a QR code. Um, keeping your records electronic also makes accessing information a lot more easy for you and your other officers. And lastly, it's important for you to attend all meetings, but if you aren't able to, make sure that one of the other officers can fill in for you and take attendance, take meeting minutes, et cetera. Also be sure, to stress that attendance is important to your members. For tracking hours as a secretary, you have to track how many hours your club um, has from service projects, DCMs, or fundraisers. 
It's also very helpful to keep your hours log information electronic, preferably through Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel, or any other spreadsheet software. You can reference the screenshot on the right to keep track of members' hours. And yeah, as always, it's important to keep your hours log organized. For example, you can organize it alphabetically by last name and also separate people by their grades. And like all other documents, um, you wanna be sure to share the hours log with your other officers as well. Now onto secretary reports. So before I talk uh, more about them, I just wanna emphasize that these reports are extremely important to tracking your club's progress. And so this helps you and also me when I read through your reports. These reports are due by the 5th of each month at 11.59 p.m. And you can access them through the PNW Keep Club website or email me um, or go to the link at the bottom of this screen. Um, I strongly recommend that you bookmark the secretary report form to make access even easier. And when you submit this report, you will be automatically sent a receipt of your response. And so then you'll need to forward this email to your club officers, faculty advisor, Kiwanis advisor, and Kiwanis secretary if you have one. As mentioned before, these reports are crucial because they're the only official way for clubs to communicate directly with the district. They also help keep a record of your club's progress in each month, which allows me to identify any challenges that your club is experiencing. Next slide. So I'll now go into some details about the secretary report and what it includes. So first you input information about your club's information. This includes your division, um, your sponsoring Kiwanis Club, your meeting time and location. Um, the next slide is a Help and Hunger District project contribution um, log essentially. So you input any projects or events that you um, did related to a district project. Um, and then also your total service hours of the month dedicated towards district project and any funds that you've raised um, for the district project. It also asks if you donated any pounds of food and if so, how many pounds. Um, next slide. It also asks for details about your club meetings. So this includes, this is basically an overview of each of your club meetings. So this includes the date, percentage of members present, um, and like a brief description and if any Kiwanians attended, how many. Um, club committees, this is um, if your club does have committees. So um, if you have a public relations, fundraising projects, Kiwanis family relations or membership committee, um, this is essentially a place where you just write the progress that your club has made during that month. And next is service projects. So you list each project that the club participated in, um, the date of the project, the number of members involved and the total number of hours for that project. And at the end of this page, you also include how many service hours that your club has um, gotten in total during that month. Um, the report also includes a section about club finances. So it asks about the amount of money in your club treasury, the total number of dues paid members. Um, and then next slide. It also includes a section for miscellaneous club details. And this includes the average percentage of members present, the number of club officer meetings. It also asks about your communication with your LTG, your PCM attendance, but um, these don't really apply to you if you don't have an LTG. Um, and finally, it includes additional comments. So concerns, questions, and then your overall progress and accomplishments of that month. Now onto secretary re resources. So on the screen, you can find a link to a secretary resource drive, and this includes sample secretary reports and meeting minutes that you can reference. You can also find a project tracker and a treasury tracker. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at secretary at pnwkclub.org. All right, perfect. Everyone is back, so we can go ahead, and get started on our last position, which is president, vice president. Um, again, I'm Kyle Hanson, district governor. I'll be going over this since I was a past club president and I worked really closely with my club vice president. So I have a really, really good information and tips for you all. So as a president, you have um, a lot of responsibilities, but the core ones are really providing supportive leadership and presiding over your club meetings. As the leader of your club, it's really important that you're establishing a climate that you want to work in. It should be enthusiastic, open, and full of concern where you can be honest with one another and facilitate that communication and feedback. You wanna congratulate each other, give feedback, follow up, and be a reliable person. And make it apparent that you're concerned and accessible, especially to your club members. 
you want to seek input and explore all possible alternatives before making important decisions. Often as a club president, members might be scared of you. I know I was scared of my club president my freshman year. So try to go up to them, really involve them. If you see someone in, during an icebreaker, for example, that's sitting alone, they don't have a group, invite them to come join your officers or you go have a conversation with them. So you should really be doing the outreach and take responsibility to get to know each of your members and be someone that's successful for them. In terms of presiding over meetings, this is pretty self-explanatory, but you should be the one creating um, your meeting agendas each week and organizing your meetings, such as a location, supplies, agenda, everything else. Be sure you have a good plan in place for your meeting so it goes well and smooth and people know what to expect each week. And if you're going to be absent for a meeting, it's really important that the rest of your officers are prepared. Try to have your vice president preside in your absence if that's possible. If not, you can turn to a secretary or another trusted officer to lead that meeting. Additionally, a huge part of your role as president is managing elections at the start of the year. Um, or if you have not already, try to set a date for in February for your club elections. You wanna give time um, to train your next club officers and be sure the transition's really smooth. You don't want to suddenly throw them into this position without training. Be sure you set time aside so they can slowly transition, get to know the role of their responsibilities and ask questions before it gets too overwhelming for them. Furthermore, you should be um, planning strategy and setting goals for your club as a whole. You want to kind of oversee each of your officer positions, be sure what's getting done is exactly what you're hoping to get done and what you want to accomplish during your term. Try to keep ongoing evaluations of club meetings and operations to lead to consistent improvement in your club, adapt as necessary, and be sure the goals that you're setting as a club president are really clear and obtainable. If you've heard the acronym SMART goals, I would recommend following that, specific, measurable, actionable, reasonable and timely goals. So it's just things you can follow specifically and know whether or not you're meeting throughout your term. And then if you're a vice president, everything that I've been saying also applies to you. But what's especially important is filling in when the president is absent and assisting other officers. You don't have a lot of specific assigned tasks as a club vice president. So what you should focus on is helping your other officers out and being sure that they have their answers questioned. They have their questions answered and that they have all the resources they need to complete their work. Um, one specific responsibility you do have is in the fall, educating your members on Key Club 101. You can find resources about that on our website. Be sure they know what like a district is, a division. They know of events and what the district does. Be sure they're knowledgeable about all the opportunities that Key Club provides them outside of your club meetings, essentially. In terms of planning meetings, the basic of planning a meeting is to work with your other officers to create a well thought out and thorough meeting agenda so you're prepared for your meeting. You want to keep your meetings at a regular meeting time. Do not cancel meetings last minute or just have them haphazardly and throw an Instagram post up the day before. You want to try to choose a consistent meeting time. My club does every Thursday after school. That way people know to expect it. And we do not cancel meetings last minute if we need to because of AP exams or location change, anything like that, we'd be sure to let people know at least a week or two in advance they can plan accordingly. And then in terms of your meeting agenda, try to prepare at least three to five days ahead. Give that agenda to your members before the meeting, or if you're choosing to go with a slideshow, you can do that as well. You have a really good example to your right of your screen. Then as a club president or vice president, we've put together quarterly responsibilities to help keep you on track. So you can review these on the slides afterward, but I'm gonna go over the most important for you to think about. Um, so during summer, the key thing that you need to be doing is setting a clear plan and goals and expectations for the upcoming school year. You can meet with your new officers and your outgoing, one, like outgoing ones in addition to your faculty and Kiwanis advisor to help make plans and organize for the coming school year. You should be setting those SMART goals and have a plan in place to achieve everything that you want to achieve by March. And furthermore, you should try to plan summer functions and events, work closely with the rest of your officer board to keep members engaged throughout the summer and make sure that they're excited for the new school year and they're continuing to perform that service. During fall, what comes up way faster than we all expect is club fair. So be sure you guys are all prepared for that with a poster and something fun and interactive for that. If your club looks professional and looks put together, people are gonna be 
significantly more likely to join and want to be involved with your clubs. It's really important you're prepared for that event. Um, in addition, during fall, you should be submitting dues. You should be thinking about that as a club vice president and president working with your treasurer and secretary to be sure dues are submitted on time and all your members know exactly what dues are going towards. So you can get that early bird patch by November 1st. For winter, you will have a ton of stuff going on. Um, something really important is to stay connected with the district during winter. So you can do that by reading our bi-weekly updates, keeping updated on our Instagram page, see information about running for lieutenant governor, hire office, see webinar opportunities coming up, district convention information, all of that great stuff. Be sure you're serving as that liaison between us and your club members so they get the information that they need. And then you should also be hosting your club elections, so be sure you're keeping track of that and have a plan in place. Something really good to think about as a club president or vice president um, are inter-club events. So this is when you work with another club. It can be a Kiwanis club, another service club at your school or a local key club. To put on an event in order to expand your audience, allow members to meet new people and maintain relationships with other groups. It reduces the planning of your event. So it makes it easier on you and makes the outreach greater. And you can get more members to potentially join your club. An example my club did is that we work with our local Jap or the Japanese club at our school to make origami to put in our library. So we got Japanese club members to come to our key club meeting and put that together. And in turn, some of them actually end up joining key club. So it's something really easy and simple you can do throughout your term. And then something that um, a lot of clubs don't have, but established clubs will are club committees. So Key Club International has put together these great standard form bylaws that you can follow to create club committees. A club committee is essentially when you have a specific task or goal that you want to accomplish, but you don't have someone to do it. You can put together a committee um, led by a committee chair and members would just be your club members to reach a specific goal. It could be public relations, social media, membership development, um, or any other of the examples on screen. If you want to do that, some tips are to find um, set goals for each committee and check in on them monthly. Be sure they know exactly what they're doing. If you're going to create a committee, have a specific purpose and plan in place for them. Um, keep in check with that committee chair. Be sure your vice president is working mostly with those committee chairs if you choose to do this. Um, committees can be long term. You could have this be something you do every year or you create a temporary committee if you just want some issue resolved quickly. Um, and then also you can use committees to delegate responsibilities to other people. If your officers have a lot on their plate, that's when you could consider a committee to try to accomplish that specific task. And be sure your committee is working together and they have that climate and relationship like we just talked about for officers, you want your committees to have that same thing. Some general tips for success, um, keeping service options diverse and well-rounded. People have a lot of varying interests, such as human health, the, the health of the environment, um, or helping other communities around them. So try to keep your service options and opportunities that you're doing really diverse. Don't do a campus cleanup every month. Try to mix it up and do something new. In addition, try to partner with your elementary school or middle school to help feed students into Key Club and be thinking about that as they move into high school. And then you can also reach out to different organizations and programs to have them help plan meeting or help plan service projects for you. So you can provide volunteers for them and reduce the stress on you as an officer. In terms of organization, um, try to use visuals as much as you can. Make sure your PowerPoints are fun and interactive. And then whenever you're doing a Google Sheet or sign up form, be sure they're accessible easy to follow. Before you put it out to members, throw it by the rest of your officer board. Be sure it makes sense and is self-explanatory so your members don't get confused and that's not a barrier for um, signing up for your activities that you're putting on. All right, some other tips and tricks. I'd recommend you return to this slide later because um, that has a lot of valuable information for you, but the most important ones I want to talk about are making sure your club advisor is aware of everything and keeping a balance between being understanding and holding people accountable. So your club advisor, you wanna be sure that they're aware of everything going on in your club. As club president, you should be communicating with them on a weekly basis at least. Um, they should be attending your officer meetings if you're comfortable with that and they should know everything that's going on. One of the worst things that you can hear as an advisor 
um, is that your key club's planning some huge service project that you don't know about. So be sure you're keeping them in the loop and that you run everything by them. They have a lot of really good knowledge and experience to share with you. And then in terms of keeping a balance, um, something I struggled with a little bit during my term was trying to find a balance between being understanding of people's personal situations. Obviously, COVID made that really challenging, um, but also holding people accountable for getting things done. So obviously, you want to first try to work with people and be understanding. Um, but if it does reach a point where you're working with an officer a lot and they aren't attending meetings, aren't doing their tasks, I'd recommend working with your faculty advisor to create a plan to either hold them accountable or do a special appointment to get um, a new officer. Don't do it too late into your term because if you end up taking everything on yourself, I promise you, you will get burnt out and that it will not be an enjoyable experience anymore. So be sure you're keeping everyone in the loop and accountable for what they signed up to do. All right, we have everyone back, which is perfect. So now I'm gonna pass that on to Angela to talk about the advisor section. So she serves on our district board as the area administrator for division 64, 65, 66, which is like the Portland, Lake Oswego area if you're from around here. And she also serves as the faculty advisor for her high school, which is Glenco, where she teaches at. So I'll pass on to her to talk about the advisor position. Hello. Um, so yeah, I guess proud to save all my credentials. Um, I guess one thing I just say is that I um, have been the key club advisor at Glenco for six years. And before that, I was the key club advisor at my old school, which was in the Southwest District for four years. So I do have a lot of experience. Um, one thing I want to um, stress is that in Key Club, you have two advisors. You have a faculty advisor and a Kiwanis advisor. So it's important um, to keep both of them in the loop. It's important to invite both of them to your meetings, to your officer meetings, um, to keep both your, again, faculty advisor and Kiwanis advisor in the loop. So I'm gonna talk about the advisors kind of separately. Um, the faculty advisors, um, kind of purpose, again, it's a student-led organization, but they are there to help you with a lot of the logistics. Um, they're there to help you make sure that you follow your school's um, rules, your school procedures. Um, ASB is, um, every school has different ASB rules, so it's important that you communicate with your advisors to know um, what those rules are. Uh, and again, um, your faculty advisor has most likely been doing this for so many years. Uh, and of course, you're only in high school for four years. So they have most likely been doing this longer than you've been in high school. So they usually know a little bit more than um, you do and are a little bit more aware of the rules and those sort of things. Um, uh, gosh, um, what was I going to say? Um, that goes with the MUC. So again, while some of you, the secretaries, this may be their first time using the MUC, most likely your faculty advisor has used it before and your faculty advisor knows how to access it, knows how to use it, knows how to pay dues, knows all those things because they've had to do it in previous years. So even if you're a first time officer, your faculty advisor should know um, how to do those things because they've had to do it in the past. Um, like Kyle said, it's really important that you keep your faculty advisor in the loop because, and this is, you know, it's happened before when you have all the years experience I do. If I get an email from my principal, that's like, um, your key club's requesting use of the auditorium on whatever date, can you please give me more information about this? And I'm like, uh, I, I didn't know they were requesting use for the auditorium. I don't know what they plan on using it for. Like, that's really embarrassing for me. And it's also not very um, professional for me as well when I don't know what my club is up to. So you really wanna make sure that you're keeping your um, faculty advisor in the loop and that you let them know what's happening. So if the principal does email them, they can be like, oh yeah, this is what I found out later. They wanted to do a talent show for the Thirst Project. So um, you have to, again, just make sure that they know so that when they do get contacted, they know exactly what um, the answers are to the questions. Um, and I, again, different schools have different policies. My school, um, nothing can go in or out of our ASD account without my signature. So anytime um, the school is putting money into the account, anytime they're taking money out of the account, it has to have my signature on it. 
So just make sure again that if you're the treasurer, that you're keeping your faculty advisor in the loop of the money that's going in and the money that's coming out because um, usually it's their name that's uh, responsible for that sort of stuff. So again, just make sure that you're um, running everything through your faculty advisor. Um, the other thing is, um, I, again, since I've been doing this for so long, uh, a lot of organizations have my contact information. Um, a lot of times if they go onto our school website and they're like key club advisor, they get my email. So I get a lot of emails from organizations within Hillsboro, which is where my school is located. So like um, the city of Hillsboro, um, TH, the Swanson Hills Park and Recreation District, they have my information. So I do get a lot of information from organizations that I can then pass on to my offices. So um, it's important again, that you are getting that because your um, faculty advisor is probably getting a lot of opportunities um, given to them that you can then um, pass on. Um, so then moving on to the Kiwanis advisor. Um, Kiwanis advisors are usually, again, not connected to the school. They're more connected, well, they're connected to the Kiwanis um, club that sponsors your club. So um, again, it's important to keep them um, in the loop so that they can help you. They have a lot of good resources. Um, they can help you with fundraisers. They can help you with um, any sort of service project. A lot of times they're good at helping with funding, um, especially if you think about the decon and how expensive decon is. Um, Kiwanis um, groups are really good at um, contributing some money um, to help your group. Like our Kiwanis club pays for our buses. They pay for our transportation to um, Seattle once in Seattle and Portland when it's in Portland. So it's a good to keep them, to keep in, uh, I don't know, to be communicating with them so that when you need money and you ask for it, they're like, oh yeah, totally. Um, Cause you don't want it to be like, oh, we never talked to you, but now we are asking you for money, right? Don't do that. Um, we also, again, work with them. They have like this next week, they have their annual 4th of July pancake breakfast and our club members go and help. They cook the pancakes, we serve the pancakes. Um, sort of thing. Um, and so again, they provide um, service projects as well that we can help with and that they can help us with. I think that's everything. Um, uh, again, the big things is to remember that your um, advisors are there to help you and advise you. They've been doing this for a long time. So usually they have answers if you have questions and um, yeah. That's it, I'll let you guys move on because I think I'm the last presenter before we're done. So I don't wanna talk anymore. Perfect, thank you so much for all of that information. And we also have on the slides, obviously you can look at after this if you'd like to, but if you're a faculty advisor, we have these great resources for you by Key Club International. If you go to keyclub.org, um, if you go to resources and advisors, you can find a wonderful advisor guide to give you helpful tips and tricks as well as these resources, which you can find again on our website. So if you go to resources and officer and advisors, you can find some of the roles of faculty or Kiwanis advisor and guides to starting a new key club if you're interested in that as well.